Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. Today we're going to be making some more homemade cleaning supplies, including a bathroom cleaner that I desperately need. But first, I am going to be trying my Valerian Root infusion that I made last night. So as part of my herbalism class, I have to make an infusion out of all of the herbs that we're studying for the nervous system. I've done chamomile and skullcap and now I'm working on valerian root. Now I am familiar with valerian. If you are not, it is quite an herb. It is very strong and powerful and it has a smell that some people would say is reminiscent of dirty socks. It is pungent, y'all. Um, but I actually don't mind this, the smell or the taste. I find it very earthy, but some people can't stand it. Um, so I have made a very strong infusion. It's been infusing overnight, and I am going to drink it today. And I'm going to drink it throughout the day for stress and anxiety. Valerian is an excellent herb to help you deal with just day-to-day -day stress and anxiety. It's non-addictive, non-habit forming. It's a little bit sedative, and um, it's really one of the best herbal treatments for for like daily stress. So I steeped one ounce of valerian in a quart of water in this pan overnight. And I'm gonna open the lid now. Woo! <laughs> that is strong, boy. It kind of reminds me of licorice, which I'm not a fan of, but it's just earthy enough that I can handle it. So here's what it looks like in the pan. So I think I'm actually going to have to like strain it into a large glass um, tea jug. What do you call this? Not a teapot. What the hell is the word for this thing? I call it a tea jug, but I don't think, I think there's a better word for it. It's just, it's just escaping my mind at the moment. Leave a comment and let me know in the comments what do you call this, okay? Um, so I'm going to strain my tea into this receptacle. <laughs> Let me get my strainer. In the South, we just call everything that tea goes into a tea jug. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to make a huge mess, but I don't really have room to do it in my sink because I've got dirty dishes in there. So, gods be with me. Let's try our best here. Oh my gosh. Hey, not too bad. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I woke up this morning with a 90s R&B song stuck in my head. Does that ever happen to you? Um, and I don't know what the song is. I can only remember like one little part of it. And it goes, it's human nature and I'm not sorry. And I'm not singing that in the right tune either. The only part I can remember is it's human nature and I'm not sorry. If you know what that song is, I have not looked it up. I'll wait and be surprised. You let me know. Okay, this is what we are left with. This is our valerian tea, our valerian infusion. So I'm just gonna drink this throughout the day and see if it helps with my stress. Now my stress levels are a lot better than they were like two weeks ago. I was really going through it. Um, I feel like now that I've made some concrete decisions about my path in life and what I wanna do, uh, my stress has definitely lessened. But I'm just one of those people that if I don't have a plan, if I don't have like, if I don't know exactly what I'm doing, what I should be focusing on, it just causes me a great deal of stress and I just have to make a decision for myself. So I've done that. I'm happy with where I'm going. And now we're going to use the valerian to help me get through this. Okay. You can use herbs to help you get through all kinds of things that are going on in your life. Depression, grief, stress. They're not just for your physical health. They're for your mental health too. Okay. I'm, I'm, procrastinating because this smells so woo it I said I like the taste but after sitting here smelling it I'm like hmm do I really want to do this okay we have to do this for my class okay I'm required as part of my materia medica to try each of these herbs on myself and experiment with them and see how they work and record my observations so I have to do this I want to do it but I have to do it too. So I think I'm gonna make an iced glass of tea because I think that's gonna make it easier to drink. You can drink herbal tea hot, iced, or room temperature. I don't wanna drink it room temperature and I don't wanna reheat it either. So we're just gonna go with the iced. Now, let me get my ice tray out. Um, I'm still using these silicone ice trays, which I like them because I don't have to buy like ice in plastic and stuff. Um, and I've learned how to use them better. You just kind of have to like pop it out from the bottom. It's just the ones on the corner that are hard to get out. 
But the ones in the center are pretty easy now that I've got the hang of it. But honestly, I probably would not buy these again. I would go with the plastic cracky. The ones that you crack open, you know? But I thought these would be really good for making soap because I could make little shaving soaps. Little tiny chunks of shaving soap in these. So I might do that with one of them. Here we go. Filling it right up to the top. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I love Valerian, and I'm sitting here like, mm, maybe I don't. So my first experience with this herb is when I was a teenager. I was probably like 15 or 16 years old, and I was having really bad menstrual cramps, like rolling around on the floor, clutching my stomach type of cramps. And my mom gave me a shot of Valerian tincture, and I threw up after it. After <laughs> I took the shot, I was like, oh, oh my god, and I literally vomited. So yeah, that was my first experience with it. <laughs> with this. Uh, let's see if I can handle the tea today. You know, it's not that bad. It is very pungent. And it does remind me of licorice, which I'm not a huge fan of. But it also tastes very earthy. And uh, if it's going to help me with my stress, I can definitely drink a cup of this. There's no real way to mask the flavor of valerian. It is just, it's just strong and there's nothing you can do about it if you want to use it. So most of the time, I think most people take this in a tincture form. And so I had two ounces. One ounce I used to make this tea and the other ounce I'm going to use to make a tincture. But I have to get some vodka first. Because I think I would much rather have just like a dropper full of this in warm water than a cup of cold tea. Um, but I do have to experiment with preparing it in different ways for my class. So I'm cool with that. Alright, so I am going to put the lid on this and put this in the refrigerator so I can drink it throughout the day. Another thing I would really like to do is replace my excessive coffee drinking with herbal tea, herbal infusions. Because at least that they give me some benefit, either physical or mental benefit. I mean, coffee does too. It makes me feel great. But I really need to back off the coffee. <laughs> yes, baby. Hold on. Dogs want to go out. So I really need to back off the coffee because I'm trying to get pregnant. And right now I'm in that waiting phase of my monthly cycle. Just waiting to see if I'm going to be pregnant this month or not. Um, I got a good feeling about this month, y'all. I got a real good feeling about it. Cross your fingers for me. Woo, y'all, this tea, um, I'm gonna have to sip on this throughout the day. This is not something that is meant to chug, all right? This is meant to sip. <laughs> Definitely gonna be taking this in tincture form in the future, but it's gonna take, um, a little time for us to make a tincture. To get that flavor out of my mouth, I'm going to have some coffee. Now, I still have some Door County Christmas over here from this morning that's still in the coffee pot hot. So, I'm just going to have some of that instead of making a new pot. So, Andrew had to work day shift today. Um, so, that's why I have coffee left over because he didn't drink an extra cup today. I like it when he works day shift because then he gets to come home and we get to be together in the evening. And it feels like we have way more time together. But his schedule is always changing and we never know what he's going to have to work from week to week. I've just kind of adapted to that. At first, I didn't like it. And I was like, man, why can't you just get a regular schedule? But I mean, it's just the nature of the restaurant business. He has to be there, you know, when they have busy times. And I've just gotten used to it. It's, it's fine with me now. But it did take, you know, some adapting to that. Okay, so I just heard my mailman. And I believe I have some deliveries today. So let's go see what I got. with me but my neighbor is having his uh, truck towed right now at this exact moment um, so I didn't want to go out there and set up a camera with all those people outside all right I've moved into the living room so I can have a little coffee and open up my packages I have three packages here Let's see what we got so first of all this is from Swanson vitamins um, I know what this is these are some supplements that I ordered and I did this 
like I compulsively ordered these okay sometimes I do this it's it's a it's a flaw it's a personality flaw that I will compulsively buy like health related products because I have health anxiety and so I ordered these and then thought I probably didn't really need those but I have them now um, I ordered vitamin K2 and uh, vitamin D3. Now, I did actually need some vitamin D3 because I'm almost out of what I have. And I like to take vitamin D in the winter because I just, I know I'm not getting enough from the sun. I don't think most people are. And uh, women with PCOS, we tend to be low on vitamin D anyway. So I try to take this and it's also good for fertility. So, but I got K2 because I read that it's supposed to help with calcium absorption and I'm just worried that I'm not getting enough calcium. I have, I don't know why I'm, I'm worried about this. All right, so this next package, I have been so looking forward to this. I've been waiting a little while for this. It's from Goldilocks Sustainable Goods. And these are the beeswax wraps I was talking about. Um, so I got these to replace like plastic wrap or plastic bags, um, anywhere that I might use that in my, I don't know how to open this. Anywhere that I might use that in my kitchen, I want to try to use these beeswax wraps. And they they got me. I saw these on like YouTube Shorts. The company that makes these, they do a really good job of their social media promotion because they sucked me in and I bought some. <laughs> so I got the mushroom print. Look how freaking cute, y'all. Look how cute that is. Um, and it's red, so it matches, well, it has red in it, so it matches my kitchen. Um, yeah, so these are beeswax wraps. I got three different sizes. I got, like, the little pack that has three sizes in it. It says, a natural alternative to plastic wrap, reusable beeswax food wraps, replace plastic, and keep your food fresh for longer. So, yeah, they're made out of cotton and Canadian beeswax. And you can see, you can look up this company, Goldilocks Goods, and I'll put a link down below, too. Um, I have a link for them that you can get 20% off if you want to try these for yourself. They feel really sticky because they're made of beeswax and they're made um, in Canada. This is a Canadian company. And I can't wait to try these on something, guys. I think I might try to wrap, like, my cheese up with these. Uh, we'll see. I'll let you know how it works when I find something to use them on. Oh, and by the way, they last for a year. Like, a year of use. And you can, like, um rinse them with cold water and then reuse them again. This says, with your support, we've eliminated over 50 tons of plastic waste. Okay, and the final thing I got in the mail today is a book, which I am so excited about this book. I hope it's as good as I think it's gonna be. Okay, let me see if I can tear this open here. I got a book called The Green Witch's Grimoire, your complete guide to creating your own book of natural magic. I just loved this. This is by Erin Murphy Hiscock, who's the author of The Green Witch, which is another really good book that I have. I will link to this down below if you want to check it out yourself. I have been purchasing books either from thrift books or from bookshop.org. I find bookshop.org is a really good alternative to Amazon if you want to buy your books um, new, and you can even buy used books there as well. And I have a whole uh, shop set up there with all of my favorite herbalism, green witchery books. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description box. And you can, if you buy them from my store, then it, you know, I get a little commission from that. So just thought I would throw that out there if you're interested. Um, but let's check out this book. I'm so, so excited about this. Um, because it guides you through making basically your own Green Witch Book of Shadows, which is something that I want to do. My Book of Shadows is all over the place right now. So I kind of want to get it organized and more um, green, if you will. <laughs> so this takes you through like designing your grimoire. So I mean, it goes through everything. Choosing the right paper, Making herbal paper? Wow. Finding the perfect ink and pens. Making a quill pen. Adding decorations and illustrations. Writing a blessing. Sewing a blessing charm. There's so many fun things to do in here. Setting up your grimoire. I mean, it's just got everything that you need. And I think I am going to systematically work through this book and really put my heart into making my book of shadows better or maybe even start over on it. It has like a template you can use to enter your plants in. This is just awesome. And it has like 
uh, an example of using red clover, which is one of my favorite herbs. It grows everywhere in Arkansas. Um, collecting samples, pressing samples, pr how to practice witchcraft with your grimoire. So yeah, I, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read through this and like actually go through and do these things. And I'll be vlogging some of it. Some stuff I don't like to vlog um, when it comes to my witchcraft because it's very personal to me and I just feel weird like trying to do it on camera. You know what I mean? But the things that, that I feel that I can share that would be beneficial to those of you who are interested, um, I will definitely be vlogging those as I go through this. I just walked in the kitchen and the whole place smells like stinky socks. It smells like valerian in here. <laughs> Andrew told me the other day he loves our whole house smelling like herbs all the time, but he might change his mind when he gets home today. <laughs> I'm gonna see if he notices anything. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna see if he walks in here and notices it. Um, I'm still working on my tea. The ice is melting a little bit, but I have to say it does make me feel quite relaxed. It makes me feel very open. It almost reminds me of kava in that respect, how it just kind of opens you up opens up your heart, opens up your mind. And watering it down a little bit helped the taste for sure. Okay, so I just realized it's like 3 p.m. and I haven't eaten anything. So I need to have some lunch and then we should still have time to make some bathroom cleaner so I can clean the bathroom tonight because I really wanna take an herb bath and just relax. I'm just all about like self-care and relaxation right now. I don't know what it is, but that's how I'm feeling. But I gotta get the bathroom cleaned up, y'all. It's a disaster and I don't have any bathroom cleaner. I used the last of my chemical stuff like last week or two weeks ago. It's been a long time since I cleaned my bathroom, okay? Don't judge me. Um, but I've been waiting because I wanted to make the cleaner on a vlog so I could share it with you and I just keep putting it off and putting it off and today is the day. First I have to eat and I don't even know if I have anything to eat in this house. Oh my god. Um, I think, I know I have bacon. Okay, we're going with the bacon because it's really the only thing that I have right now. Um, I do have some ground beef that I'm gonna make that for dinner though, so, but I want something now. And when I say dinner, um, we usually eat dinner at like nine o'clock at night because our schedule is slightly off from the traditional nine to five schedule. We usually go to bed around 2 a.m., wake up around 10 a.m. and um, eat dinner at like 9 p.m. So <laughs> that's just kind of the, the schedule that we've sort of found ourselves in over time. Um, that makes the most sense for us with Andrew's work schedule. So yeah, I'm gonna make some of this Applegate natural, uncured, sugar-free bacon. I love this stuff. When something's going on, you must whip it. Whip it, whip it good. Whip it into shape. <laughs> now I got Devo stuck in my head. All right, y'all, I'm gonna cook this bacon in a skillet because I just don't even wanna mess with the griddle today. I don't wanna clean it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm doing it in a skillet because I'm only making enough bacon for me. Um, poor Andrew, he's gonna have to get something to eat at work. All right, and I'm just gonna um, stick my hands right in here because that's how I do bacon. I mean, there's really no better way to do it than just to get your hands in there, get your hands dirty. I'm just gonna put as many pieces of bacon as I could possibly get in here. And then I might whip up some eggs as well. Bacon and eggs is always a go-to meal on the carnivore diet when you just need something quick and easy. Hot. And of course hot dogs and eggs, but I just had that. And I've really been craving bacon lately. I think I might need more fat in my diet. I hear you, pumpkin. Now Bella wants to go outside and I got bacon hands. You're gonna have to wait a second, honey. Let me uh, wash my hands here so I can open the door. I don't wanna get raw bacon germs all over the place. There's no dish towel. There's no dish towel. I gotta find a dish towel. I just had to go try to open the linen closet with my wet hands. Dogs, I found a dish towel though. All right, here you go. Y'all, it's freezing cold outside. It is so cold. I doubt they're gonna stay out there for very long. It's a cold boy. All right, let's get our um, heat turned on. I just turned it on to medium and let it go. And then you know what? Now we have open bacon. I wonder if we can wrap it in that beeswax. <laughs> Let's find out. Who's that rapping at my door? Rapping, tapping, Eleanor. That is not how the poem goes. I realize that. I was just thinking of Edgar Allan Poe because it was his uh, birthday the other day. 
and the dogs started knocking on the door. I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. All right, I got my beeswax wraps here. I'm so excited about these. Let's open them up and see how to use them. Um, I want to make sure I use them properly. I know you can't like expose them to heat or hot water because that'll melt the beeswax off. It says the pressure and heat of your hands will cause the wrap to stick. Used to wrap cheese, fruits, vegetables, herbs, sandwiches, snacks, cover leftovers, and more. Not recommended for meat. Okay, never mind then. We are not going to use it for meat. Um, okay, I'm glad I read this. Good to know. So we're not going to use these after all. Um, you know what we will do though? Maybe I'll get a block of cheese out and we'll wrap that just to see. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to use one of the plastic bags that I still have to store the bacon in. I hate using plastic, but I have them and I think it's better to use them than to just throw them away. Once these are gone, I think I'm going to start using glass to store my bacon. Bacon is really the only meat that I ever have like left over in the refrigerator because when I make like burgers or steak or something we just cook all of it at once obviously um so yeah I think I'll just start using because I do have a large glass container that I could use to store it in but right now I'll just use up these bags first okay back to the beeswax wraps it says wash by hand in cool soapy water great for the fridge not for the freezer do not heat just remember not too hot not too cold just right wraps last about a year and are compostable awesome also they were shipped in a paper um envelope instead of plastic which i really appreciate and they're wrapped in paper as well this one is just like a brown wood pattern that's the small one the medium size one is like a t like a beige and tan like floral pattern and then the big boy is the mushroom so I'm very excited to use these on something. So let's pull out some cheese. So this is how we used to store our used cheese in a plastic disposable one use bag. And I, like I said, I'm trying to get away from that as much as possible. I wish I could buy cheese that doesn't come in plastic itself. And I just haven't seen that anywhere here. Um, I don't know if it's possible to get cheese not in plastic in my area anyway. Oh my gosh, y'all. This smells so good. It smells like honey. <coughs> Belle Belle, you just went outside, pumpkin. She wants to go out again. There must be something out there she wants to bark at. All right, let's go. Let's see if we can, I'm gonna wrap it in the plastic that it's already in. And then let's see if we can wrap it up in this. Um, and I basically think that you just use your fingers to sort of, I don't know if I'm doing this right. <laughs> I'm gonna try my best, but I think you just use your fingers to like make a seal and the warmth from your fingers just like seals it up. And now I've just got a little sealed, yeah, it's just, it's sealing really easily. I can feel it like sticking together. It'll seal up that cheese. Oh, look at that, it's like a little wood nugget, but it's cheese. That was like really easy. I just used my fingers to smash it around the cheese. And now I'm gonna store this in the fridge and we'll see how it goes when it comes out. All right, my bacon is done. So I don't even think I feel like eggs today. I think I'm just gonna have some bacon and cheese for lunch because I'm gonna be making dinner, I don't know, here in, a, here in four or five hours, but I'm just really not that hungry today. Um, yesterday I ate an entire ribeye with two tablespoons of butter and a burger patty with cheese. And I was like really full after that. And today I'm just not that hungry. It's really awesome how I can listen to my body now when I nourish it with meat. Um, so now I'm gonna nourish it with some bacon and cheese. And then we'll be back for bathroom cleaner. In case you're wondering, the color of the day today is coral, which is why I'm wearing this coral colored shirt. And the incense of the day is mint, which I do not have yet. So we're gonna burn some myrrh are all purpose around this household. And actually by the time you see this, that will not be the color and incense of the day because I'm recording this on Friday to upload on Monday. But if you are interested in keeping up with the color and incense of the day, I have been posting them on my community tab every day on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed if you're interested in seeing that or you can just go check it out. And I post the color of the day, the incense of the day, and a little blurb, a little uplifting blurb about the day 
that I think you might need to hear. All right, I'm gonna go put my incense in the incense holder over here and we need to light a candle as well. And I've got a couple, I've had a couple questions from you guys about where to get the incenses, the different incenses for the incense of the day because a lot of them are really like hard to find. Um, there's like a bunch of obscure scents like Narcissus and Magnolia. Um, you can find them on Etsy. And I would recommend the shop called Gia's Traditions. And down below in the description box, there's a link to my resources page on my website where I link things that I recommend for you. And I have a whole section on incense there where you can find, there's three different shops that I buy incense from right now. Gia's Traditions, Sacred Mists, and um, Alchemy Flame. If you're, want, if you're wondering where to get them, I would recommend checking Etsy shops because you can get handmade incense really high quality and it's pretty inexpensive, like three to four dollars a pack. I'm slowly working on collecting. I wanna get all of the different incenses that are in the Magical Almanac, so I have one for every day. But uh, yeah, it's a slow process because I just buy what I can afford at the time. But luckily I have that huge box of myrrh that I can burn when I don't have the incense of the day. Okay, now I think we're finally ready to make bathroom cleaner, y'all. I am ready for this because my bathroom is dirty. First, just let me take another little sip of Valerian. I texted, Andrew texted me, he's like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, um, I'm feeling pretty relaxed from this Valerian tea. And he's like, all hopped up on potions. I like it. <laughs> and I was like, yep, that's how I plan to stay from now on. All hopped up on potions. I actually had to turn the overhead light on because it's getting so dark in here. Um, I just got a warning on my phone that snow is coming. It's freezing outside. It's dark and we're about to get snow. Um, I really hope Andrew gets home before it gets too bad. I think we were supposed to get something like 10 inches. Um, I don't know how much we're going to get in this exact location, but that's just kind of like for the state, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but we might have a, uh, we might have a snowstorm coming. And the dogs think it's later than it is and they want to have their dinner. But you're going to have to wait, dogs. Okay, so I'm going to use this larger empty spray bottle that I have. It's, uh, it holds, it says 12 ounces, but it actually holds more than 12 ounces. Um, the recipe I have is for 16 ounces, so I hope that's going to fit in here. I do have these glass spray bottles. I'm not sure which one will hold more, honestly. I think I'm just going to go with the plastic for this. Okay, then we will be using liquid castile soap. So I use Dr. Bronner's Baby Unscented Pure Castile Soap. I use this for pretty much all of my cleaning purposes in my house now. Then we need to get our essential oils. But first, Gibbons wants to say hello. Gibbies, say hello. He's, he's sniffing around for food. They want their dinner. We might have to stop and feed them. Don't eat dog kibble, Gibbons. Okay, he's really hungry if he's about to start eating dog kibble, y'all. So let's take a break and feed the animals. If anybody just clicked on this video because they wanted to see bathroom cleaning, they're going to be sorely disappointed until like the last 10 minutes of the video. Okay, I got to go in here and get the pet food. So let me get their bowls down. Get Gibbons can and a can for the dogs. Dogs, you are getting savory stew with chicken and vegetables tonight. So Gibbons is getting his usual can of Beneful Incredibites dog food. Don't freak out if you've never seen my channel before, if you've never seen this part before. Gibbons, this is the only kind of wet food he will eat. We have tried everything. Um, and he will eat this, so we give it to him once a day, but he gets all of the nutrients that he needs, all of his cat vitamins from his prescription kibble. But the vet says it's okay to feed him this because it's better for him to eat some wet food than nothing. And as long as he's getting what he needs from his kibble, he is fine. Okay, the dogs are having their science diet food. This is savory stew with chicken and vegetables. Now I'm no longer feeding them that log food because they stopped eating it. They would not eat it anymore and I think it's because it was cold and they don't like um, cold food in the winter. So they just stopped eating it and I had to find another solution. So we went back to the science diet uh, canned food. They really like this and it's, I feel pretty good about its quality as far as a pet food is concerned. So they each get a half can of this a day and then they have free access to their science diet kibble at all times. And they usually go through a bowl or two of that every day. And this, we've been buying this at our local pet store, um, which I wanna take you guys to because it is so cool. Okay, who's ready for dinner? Who's ready for dinner? There you go. 
Gibbies! Gibbies, come on, get yours. There you go, buddy. So I just had a viewer request more Gibbons content. So there you go. Watch him eat his dog food. Look at his little tail going. That means he's happy. That's his happy tail. <laughs> so I have to thank my viewer Mars for buying me a coffee. Thank you so much, Mars. And I will definitely get more Gibbons content coming for you. And if anyone else out there would like to support the channel and buy me a coffee, it's a donation of $2 or more. You can find the link down below in the description box. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get back to business. The dogs have been fed. The cat's been fed. Everybody's happy now. So we've got our spray bottle, our liquid castel soap, and now we need our essential oils. So I'm going to head right back in the laundry room to my little essential oils collection here. And we are going to look for tea tree, which I believe is back here in the back. There it is. Tea tree oil. This is an excellent germ killer for the bathroom. And we're going to combine that with some peppermint oil. First of all, we just need two cups of water, which I'm going to get from the tap. Doesn't matter if it's warm or cold. Then I'm just gonna put this right in the spray bottle. Let's see if it'll fit two cups. If it doesn't, I'll just do 12 ounces. I think it'll fit two cups, but we also have to put our Castel soap in here, so we might be pushing it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. So we only need a fourth cup of liquid Castel soap, so I'm gonna measure that out in my measuring cup here um let's see two ounces all right let's hope we can fit this in here Ooh, i don't know if it's gonna fit oh uh, come on come on come on come on oh my gosh it's going right to the top it's going right to the top but we did it we did it <laughs> okay so we've got our soap and our water and now we just have to add our essential oils we're gonna add an entire tablespoon of tea tree essential oil and this is like i said a powerful germ killer and this is where all the germ killing action comes from if i can get it open and it's going to take me forever to fill this up i wonder if i can take the reducer cap off okay i'm not going to try that i'll just sit here and drip 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 until it fills up to a <laughs> to a tablespoon so i'm going to use this as a toilet cleaner sink cleaner so i really need it to be powerful and get rid of germs so yeah, tea tree oil is where it's at. Tea tree oil is incredibly inexpensive as well. And it has multiple uses throughout your house if you're into natural cleaning. And like I said, you can check my resources page on my website if you want to know where I get my supplies. It smells so good. I love the smell of tea tree. Okay, that should be good enough. And I'm going to try my best to pour this in here. I'm going to put it in this cup. Oh man, I knew I was gonna spill it everywhere. Oh, I did too. We got it, most of it in there though. And finally, we're gonna add 10 drops of peppermint essential oil. Um, you can also use eucalyptus instead of peppermint or even lemon I think would be nice, but I'm gonna use peppermint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And I just realized this is probably going to overflow when I put the lid back in. Let's see. Uh, we're gonna, oh my God, y'all. It's going all the way to the tippy top. It's going all the way. I think we, it barely made it. <laughs> if you use one of these spray bottles, it's gonna barely make it, okay? We gotta try to shake it up a little bit. And I've got tea tree oil everywhere. We're gonna, I'm gonna wipe this down because it did get oil all over it. But I managed to do it. I think next time uh, when I make this recipe, uh, if I use this specific spray bottle again, I will not, I will only fill it up to 12 ounces of water because it just went all the way to the top and it was a bit much. And it's like hard to even mix it now. But I think it's gonna do the trick for us. Now this is strong. This is not something that you necessarily wanna get on your skin. Um, cause it, the tea tree is strong, but it's for cleaning purposes, not for cosmetic purposes. Okay y'all, I'm in the bathroom and I'm sorry about the lighting, but that's the best I can do in here. And I'm sorry about the noise because I have this overhead fan that goes every time you turn the light on. Nothing I can do about that. 
but I wanted to demonstrate the cleaner. So we're gonna clean the sink. I'm not gonna show you my dirty toilet because ew, okay? But I will show you my dirty sink, <laughs> my shame. Okay, we're going handheld here. Here is my sink. I have a pedestal sink, sink, not stink. And I need to get rid of these uh, washcloths. Let's get those out of the way. And then this hand towel, we need to replace that. This needs to be washed too, ew. So does the top of this. Like all this stuff just gets gross and gunky and needs to be cleaned. Hopefully you can see the sink. Oh yeah, that's a nice view. All right, let's clean. So I'm just, oh, I gotta turn this on give it a second to start working apparently. There we go. So I am just gonna really spray down the sink and get it nice and saturated with this. And then we will wipe it down using a Swedish dishcloth. And I think I'm going to make the gray color specifically for the bathroom or specifically for the sink, I guess. Um, that way I don't use it on dishes because it grosses me out to use the same like rag that I used in the bathroom on my food, you know, my dishes, my food receptacles. So I'm just going to kind of scrub this down and then we're going to rinse. But I just want to get a nice scrub with the soap and the tea tree oil to kill all of the germs. I hope you can see this. I know it's not a great angle, but I don't have a lot of room here in my bathroom to put you. So I'm just scrubbing away here at all the surfaces. And let me inspire you. If you know that your bathroom needs to be clean today, get over there and do it. Just get it done. You know, it doesn't take long to clean a bathroom. I know it sucks. But if you just roll up your sleeves and do it, it'll be done and your bathroom will be clean. And you'll thank me. Okay, I'm gonna wring this out in the water. I wish I had like a spray hose in here like I have in the kitchen. Um, that would be really helpful to clean this thing. I would prefer not to have a pedestal sink, but it is what I have, so. We're gonna work with that, clean it up, and shine it up, y'all. I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Okay, there she is, all nice and clean and sparkly and good as new. Uh, the new cleaner works really well. I could highly recommend it for your bathroom. Well guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today while I got some stuff done. I'm about to go finish cleaning the bathroom. I gotta do the toilet and the tub and then um, I'll probably mop the floors in there because I want to get it ready for my bath tonight. I want to take a nice relaxing lavender bath. That sounds so good to me. Drink another cup of my Valerian tea and just have a lovely relaxing night. And I hope the same for you. I hope you're having a wonderful winter. I hope you're having a wonderful year and I hope you have a great night and I will see you with a new video very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.